uh, soaring and it also has the advantage of going to the long reach it is used again for uh, excavation activities for canals as well and uh, even uh, you can use this without uh, hauling units this is the dark line uh, it is having a uh, different uh, components whatever I gold and you see uh, uh, the, the length it is it can reach for handling the material with, with the highest distance or the largest distance and uh, you see it, it is racket has been used for handling the material uh, and this has been very much useful even when you go for a, a bridge construction uh, purpose This is the line diagram of your drag line which, in, which is having the, the, the boom and this is the operator cabin and uh, here you have a frame and uh, you have two type of ropes one is one is uh, first is a drag rope and you also have the hoist rope and uh, you, this drag rope and the hoist rope high rope is connected to a, a boom uh, to, a, to a point and this drag rope is connected to the frame along with where the cabin is located and uh, both are being uh, connected to a bucket where this bucket is used for a uh, material handling purpose and you also have the suspension rope used for uh, uh, the suspension activity And again, this is again a rotating frame, uh, just what I have told for a power server disc, similar to power server disc equipment uh, called drag line can also be rotated. And according to that, uh, uh, the material can be handled uh, depending upon the place where it needs to be taken. And uh, the next important uh, equipment is a back hoe. It is also called as uh, or a back shovel uh, and a pull shovel uh, and uh, it is used to excavate uh, uh, below the natural surface on which it rests so here here what we have for a back hole is also used for uh, excavating trenches and also used for uh, uh, the basement pits pits for basements and also it is also used for grading purpose and uh, here we can control uh, a high level of uh, depths uh, for which we can use this backhoe. And again, uh, there are different parts. It includes a boom, uh, jack boom, boom, foot drum, boom sieve, sieve uh, stick sieve, stick bucket, and the bucket sieve. And even uh, this bucket is made very much important for all the equipment, whatever we have seen for a power shovel or a, a drag line or a backhoe. So the selection of the bucket size, shape, even that is also very much important uh, depending upon the application, whether you want to go for a hard material or a soft material accordingly, um, you can also select the bucket as well. And uh, the changing of the bucket uh, uh, is also being possible. Uh, when, 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 and again, you can also contact the, the manufacturers or the, 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 depending upon your thing and again, uh, even uh, this, uh, the digging or uh, excavation activities using the bucket uh, can also optimize your running cost or operating cost. Uh, but you cannot use the bucket uh, having a, a softer material and you can use that for a harder material. And if you use uh, the, the softer ma material bucket to handle the hard material, then the, the tooth it is a part of a bucket will result in a damage condition and again uh, that will be a, a big loss so you need to select the packet and accordingly you can also uh, either go for a cost reduction and you can also optimize the cost that is also a good way uh, and these are the different parts what 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 is there in, in a backhoe which involves a, a, a boom and we also have a loader and uh, we have the cap this is a stick, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, having the bucket. And all these are being hydraulically operated. And again, uh, it can rotate 
uh, depending upon uh, the, the place where it is going to excavate or do the um, construction activities. And accordingly, it can also handle the materials. This backhoe is been uh, suitable for digging below the machine, such as uh, for trenches, footings, and also for basement activities. And it can also be efficiently used to dress or trim the surface, avoiding the, the manual effort for dressing the excavated surface. We have uh, 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 the next important equipment called a clamp cell. Uh, this is the way the name clamp cell comes because of its resemblance of the packet to a clam, which is like a selfish. Okay, so when you look at the packet. Okay, so we have seen the bucket of a drag line, power shovel, and also the backhoe. Here, uh, the clamp cell bucket, I will show it in the next slide, it will be like a selfish, selfish, okay, selfish cell, uh, and uh, it is hinged to a double cell. So that's, that's why it is called as a clamp cell uh, uh, equipment. The front end is essentially a crane boom, which is uh, again. Uh, uh, a specially designed bucket which has been loosely attached to tables as in the case of a drag line. Uh, the capacity of the clamp cell bucket is usually, uh, again, uh, this is also based on the cubic uh, meters, like what's the capacity, how much is the quantity of uh, material you need to handle. Accordingly, you can also select the, the bucket size as well. And uh, the, the basic parts of this clamp cell bucket includes uh, the line, hoist line, Closing line, sieves, you have brackets, you have tagline, cell, and hinge. Where this clamp cell are being used? It is for handling loose materials such as uh, uh, you have used for crust to stone for your uh, construction activities. You can use this clamp cell, and you can also use this clamp cell for uh, sand, gravel, uh, gravel uh, uh, handling a purpose. And uh, the main features is you have the vertical, it has been used for a vertical lifting of material from one location to another location. And this also been mainly used for removing material uh, from a coffer dam or a sewer main holes and also for a well foundation, etc. Um, so this, very, very, this is a very good uh, equipment that you can use it. And as I said, this looks like a selfish and you have the two cells. Because of its shape, it is called as a clamp set. Okay. And this is used for uh, handling the, the, the stones, crusted stones basically, and the sands and even uh, the clay. Okay. So that is the last slide, what I was shown is a bucket alone, and this is the complete equipment. Uh, it's basically an excavator kind of thing, but uh, since it's Sir, your mic is off. Muted. Excuse me, Arjun. Mr. Arjun Raj, sir, it's a, uh, yes, sir. Your mic is muted now. Please switch it on. Yeah, now. Perfect. Hope my previous slide is. Uh, I think uh, you would have heard my voice up to last slide. Uh, yeah. Uh, now we need to compare. Uh,
सर अगेन मूटेड So the, here the, the comparison is based on the excavation uh, and also here the excavation and also based on the distance and also the loading efficiencies and uh, the digging level and also based on the cycle time. So if you want to go for uh, excavation hard soil or a rock, then the power server backhoe is good. And uh, when you want to go for uh, excavation in, in a wet soil or in a mud, then you can go up, up for a drag line or a clamp cell. And uh, if the distance between the footing and the digging is uh, uh, higher, as I said, uh, this drag line and clamp cell can be used for a longer distance uh, uh, material handling. And uh, as far as the loading efficiency is concerned, uh, the power server is very much good. Uh, confirming whether my mic is not off. Okay. And as far as this uh, footing is uh, footing record requirement is concerned, uh, the power server is uh, very close to work. Backhoe is very close to pit, and whereas the drag line and the uh, clamp cell is very fairly away from the pit. And as far as the digging level is concerned, uh, uh, digs is based on uh, the footing level, as I said previously. And accordingly, you can use it. Uh, based on your requirements and the, the very important thing is the cycle time the cycle time to handle uh, the material is very short in the power server so the, the time requirement is very less which means in a, in a lesser time you can also carry out the activities um, and uh, it's shortly more than the power server in the case of backbone but whereas in the case of uh, drag line or in the clamp cell uh, the, the cycle time or the duration is going to be higher because, uh, as I said, uh, this is being mainly used for a uh, distance uh, where the distance is going to be higher. So, accordingly, the time taken also to excavate or to, to handle the material is also going to be higher. The, the, the next important machine is a trenching machine. This is a trenching machine that is used for excavating uh, trenches for the, the pipelines and also for the uh, sewer cables. Uh, etc and uh, you can use this trenching machine uh, used for uh, excavation activities and even uh, you, you have to select this machine based on uh, the requirement with respect to the specifications you have two type of trenching machines one is a wheel type it can be either wheel type or it can be a leather type and uh, I will I will show you some of the video related to trenching machine where you will understand much more uh, in a much more better manner. Um, the next important uh, machine is a scrapper machine, which are it is a, a unique machine which are used for digging and is also used for long distance hauling of uh, uh, pluggable uh, materials. And this is again a self-operating machine. It is not depending uh, on, on other equipments. And uh, the wheels of machines can cause uh, some compaction. And uh, the basic parts of its crackers are bowl, apron, and the tailgate. This tailgate is also called as a inductor. This is how uh, the, the scrapper looks. Uh, the, the equipment is being manufactured by a company called uh, John Deere, JD, is short, they call JD. Uh, this is the equipment which has been used for digging uh, 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 activities and also for uh, the, the construction activities. You can use this uh, for the construction of the roads. See how smoothly you can, you can also use this. 
the next important is a bulldozer where you have a heavy blade which is attached to a tractor which pushes the material from one place to another another and uh, this basically a, a tractor application which can be of a crawler this bulldozer is of two types it can be either crawler or it can be of wheel type and again uh, the classification of the bulldozer is based on the position of the blades and uh, the blade is a part of a bucket and uh, the bulldozer in which the blade is perpendicular to the direction of the movement and again based on that uh, the bulldozer is also classified and again based on the angle in which uh, uh, the bulldozer is going to have the movement against the particular material based on this you can also classify the bulldozers and again the next important thing is based on uh, the classification of bulldozer is also based on the mountings one is a wheel mounted and another one is crawler mounted and it's also based on the control how 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 the bulldozer can be controlled whether it is cable controlled or it is going to be a hydraulically controlled one these are the different parts of a uh, bulldozer the very important thing is a bucket with a blade and again uh, here you have different uh, components uh, like uh, what we have seen in the, for the previous cases um but here the size of the blade or uh, the bucket is going to be much more higher uh, as compared to that of the previous uh, equipments and uh, this can also be used for uh, 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 very uh, complex activities where uh, it is not been possible for the, by the previous uh, equipments whatever we have seen and uh, here as i said this again based on the crawler type or a wheel type Based on that, the classification of the bulldozer can be uh, classified, and it can be either hydraulically operated or it can also be uh, operated uh, through cables. And uh, it's also having the cylinders. You have the blade lift cylinder. You also have the riper cylinder, and uh, this been used for um, uh, getting the power. And according to that, uh, the movement of uh, the bucket and also the movement of uh, and the tool can be taken you also have the riper pick tool which is located at the back side it is also used for uh, the digging or uh, uh, construction purpose where this bulldozers have been mainly used uh, as far as uh, the construction purpose is concerned it is used for spreading the earth seed uh, as i said uh, Uh, if you have a, a bigger uh, size and where it is not been possible for by other equipment, you can use uh, the bulldozer. And it is also used for opening up uh, pilot roads uh, uh, through a mountainous and rocky terrains. If you, you are constructing any anything into the the mountain region or in the where you have the rock terrains, uh, this also can be used in a much more better manner. Used for clearing construction. So sometimes you also need to clear it. Okay. Sometimes you also do some uh, re re renovation or kind of thing. Uh, even at the PWD, you also might be doing it. And uh, when you go for a renovation or something like um, some of the bridges where uh, it is almost to to fail, and you can also do the demolition activity of the bridge, and again you can construct a new bridge for which you can use this uh, bulldozers. And if you want to demolish, you can also use uh, uh, where uh, where it's not that you are going to demolish the, the thing purposefully, but uh, if you are not demolishing that, that will also lead to uh, 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 some of the uh, accident or kind of thing. So it is very much important. You need to go for clearing the particular bridges, uh, and you are going to go for a new new bridges or uh, construction activities for which you can use these bulldozers. I will show you. I have a video. I will also show you uh, how this all be used for. um for uh, taking out the materials uh, when when you are uh, demolishing or uh, removing the material from the uh, from the old bridge uh, it is also used for maintaining old roads and used for clearing lands for uh, from the trees and stumps basically you can use this for uh, highway purposes as well and uh, this also been used for backing the trenches at the construction sites by dragging the earth from one place to another place And the very important thing is a tractor. You have uh, you you may might be knowing this uh, terminologies. So you have two type of tractor. One is a crawler type, and another is a wheel type. And uh, and this crawler type again, 
the tractor with a doser or a scrapper what you have and we have seen uh, some of the, uh, the equipments in previous equipments where, we have, where this tractor is of two types in which is either of crawler type or it can be a knee type in the case of crawler type what you have is you have a chain and, uh, and which has been very much useful in the case of uh, muddy soils or in the case uh, the friction between uh, the chain and the uh, and the soil area area earth is very loose and uh, the speed of uh, the crawl type tractor will it cannot exceed uh, uh, 12 km per hour okay but uh, when you want to increase the speed of your uh, machine uh, sometimes like uh, if you have the requirement of 40 km per hour then you need to have an engine which is mounted on a four wheeler four wheels four wheel drive basically and you need to have a wheel type tractor rather than chain type and uh, where you want to have high speed and uh, it's also used for uh, the wheel type is also used for a long distance traveling and also for a uh, good, good roads uh, this is the tractor uh, having uh, a chain uh, application the crawled, the crawled uh, and uh, the truth and uh, the wheel type I have not shown, but I will show in some of the videos. Um, the, the, here we have a comparison between a crawler type and a wheel type. As I said, the crawler type is uh, less than, uh, not beyond 20 km per hour, and this can be uh, used for a higher speed, uh, even exceeding 50 km per hour. Uh -huh. and, uh, in the case of travel type, it is uh, much more compact and powerful and can also handle heavier jobs. But uh, this build type can handle only lighter jobs. Uh, and the travel type, the cost is going to be higher. Travel type cost is going to be higher, and the build type is going to be cheaper. I will also give you a uh, picture with respect to the cost. How much will be the cost involved? And uh, in, the, in the second half, you see uh, mostly of the cost point of view. And, uh, the operations and maintenance cost is going to be higher for a crawler type and uh, because of its complexity with respect to the, the chain system what it is having and again uh, as again your uh, friction is going to be higher and uh, even um, the replacement cost is also way much more higher when you go for a crawler type but uh, but this uh, but the advantage here is it can handle the uh, heavy jobs and uh, it is uh, you have in the case of product you have a stick control for a uh, steering and in the case of uh, wheel type you have a wheel steering control uh, this car that can run uh, uh, cannot go uh, in a rough road it cannot go in a in a good road okay uh, and if it is a wheel, wheel type it can go both in a road rough road as well as in a good road and uh, this car type is used for a short distance whereas this can be used for a longer distance in the case of wheel type uh, the, the, the skill requirement for operating the machines is uh, uh, is not need to be too much highly skills okay but uh, whereas in the case of uh, crawler type to operate the machines you need to have a skillful operator and uh, and that will also uh, call for a maintenance and repairs as well. And the next important uh, thing is the ro rollers. You have different type of rollers. You have smooth wheel rollers, sea foot rollers, you have turn foot rollers, you have uh, pneumatic tied rollers. So yes, you will see these different type of rollers. What is been, what we are using for a roads and uh, bridges construction. So first one is a smooth wheel roller. So these are uh, blind steel rollers. It is again a self-propelled type. The weight of this roller can vary between 5 to 15 tons. And uh, this uh, smooth wheel rollers are being used for uh, ordinary rolling work where you need to have a deep compaction. Uh, where you no need to have a deep compaction. Okay. Um, maybe what i can say the deep compaction is the sense the depth what you have okay you don't need to have too much depth and for that particular application you can use these smooth wheel rollers um and uh, these rollers will have one front and two rear wheel uh, and uh, the rear wheels uh, are being uh, usually larger in diameter and uh, front one being uh, 
when the rival saw you in the in the in the picture how it looks and this smooth view rollers may be increased by filling uh, the weight the weight of the fill rollers can also be increased by filling water or sand uh, sand ballast in the hollow cylinder and these rollers are effective in compacting uh, granular oils uh, such as uh, sand gravel and even it can be used for handling the crushed stone as well and you see uh, this is the smooth wheel roller where the, the rear wheel or the real uh, um, roller or the real uh, the diameter is much more higher than the front one okay where you have two two uh, at the rear and one one wheel at the front okay. and uh, the next important roller is a seat foot roller and this is also used for uh, compacting uh, purpose especially used for uh, uh, the work activity which is going to happen in impacts and also in canals here uh, the last uh, what we have is the smooth uh, in, in the case of uh, the roller what we have seen that the depth is not required but here because of seat, seat foot uh, rollers you can use this where you are the compaction uh, depth is higher and uh, it gives the best result with respect to the compaction Uh, when the soil is clay or predominantly uh, it is coercive or impervious, and uh, the seed foot rollers may also uh, weigh up to fifteen tons. In the, the case of previous one, we also have seen the weight uh, is between five to fifteen tons, and uh, as far as weight is concerned, it is also in line with the previous roller, and it can uh, travel. One advantage is that it can travel up to twenty-five kilometers per hour, uh, and uh, and this uh, as as uh, this seafood rollers can also move over the surface um it can also penetrate the soil uh, and pressure and it can mix and compact the soil from the bottom to the top layer and uh, with the continuous uh, uh, usage of the roller uh, what happens is the penetration of the, the, the Feet, uh, it decreases, and this is very good. It, it will result in a very good compaction with respect to the soil. And uh, and again, it, it it when it is operating, it also giving me some pressure, so that the compaction is going to happen in a perfect manner uh, between the soil uh, and then and then the, the earth, where it is going to have a different type of layer. Uh, Compacting the the proper compaction purpose. This is the ship foot roller. You can see how it looks. And here uh, advantage is that it can go up to twenty five kilometer per hour. And in the case of uh, the, the smooth roller, what we have seen in the first type, um, having a, a single roller at the front and a two roller at the rear. And uh, where even the depth is not that much uh, highly uh, effective, but here you can also go to the higher depth, and the compaction efficiency is also going to be higher. The the, the next uh, type is a pneumatic type uh, roller. It uh, contains uh, a platform between the two axles, the rear of uh, which one has uh, a wheel than the front. is also been used for compacting but uh, still this is used for compacting the fine grain the soil and well graded uh, sands okay uh, depending upon uh, the, the condition you also need to select what type of ro roller you need to have for the particular application and uh, this pneumatic type of uh, roller is also used for a uh, ballasting operation which can be done either using water or sand or a big iron in order to increase the shelf weight of the equipment The major advantages uh, of uh, going with the pneumatic type roller includes uh, it has the ability to control the ground uh, contact pressure by altering the weight of the machine. It can also increase the number of wheels. It can also increase the tire width. Yeah. Even this also is important. Let's say the size and the shape of the tire that can be uh, increased with the help of uh, pneumatic type rollers as well. And when you increase the tire width or the tire size, again accordingly uh, you have the uh, more much more control over uh, the ground with additional pressure, additional contact pressure basically. And uh, you can also uh, 
this pneumatic type uh, roll is also helping you to have the the content area of the tire by altering the content pressure as well see uh, you have different uh, here you have four uh, four wheels so accordingly you can also increase the width if required accordingly if you increase the width what happens uh, you have the high pressure into the, uh, the object so here the object is the road see uh, this is used for leveling as well and even this is also used for giving some pressure which is required for you um, level the surface and also this helps uh, for a smooth construction of uh, roads or even um, the, uh, the, the, the PWD activities. Uh, the next important uh, equipment is a hauling equipment. They are used for transportation of the materials also known as a hauling equipment or yes, or yes, simply you call it a hauler as well. And uh, it can be uh, used for uh, operating on the roadways or even it is also used for a railway application. Here it involves the transportation of uh, materials. Um, it's used for, uh, and uh, here it is also used for uh, carriage and disposal of uh, excavator yes. And this is used for uh, haulage of uh, heavy construction equipment as well. And uh, as far as the hauling is concerned, it's uh, based on uh, the load 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 dumping. It is classified as uh, trucks and also dumpers. So when I said trucks, it is having two types. It can be a side or rear dump trucks, or it can be a bottom dump trucks. And the dumpers is also a part of the hauling equipment. Let us see the, the dump trucks. These have been used for earth moving purpose and the selection of the type of the dump trucks is based on the job what it is going to carry out depending upon the soil condition. And here uh, you have, as I, so, as I said, you have two types of uh, uh, dump trucks. One is uh, front drum trucks and one is a rear drum trucks or a side drum trucks. In case of uh, side or rear drum trucks, what you have um, uh, uh, a strong build body which has been hinged on the truck cases and uh, this has also been hinged to a place where it can do the action of a hydraulic hydraulic jacks and uh, this side or rear drum trucks has been used for hauling a wet clay or a sand or a gravel or a quarry rocks basically it is, it is you can use this for a for a for a uh, for a uh, rock quarrying activities. This is the side drum uh, truck where, where, it will have, where it is used for uh, carrying a uh, big rock as well. Quarrying purpose you can use. Okay. And uh, when I say side or rear, even this you can assume that this this uh, side this can be even the rear side as well. Uh, but mostly, uh, it is uh, why it is called uh, rear because uh, this is front side is a rear side, and uh, why it is called side because it can either uh, handle the material either in the side, left side, or even you can also have this in the opposite direction as well. And uh, here, uh, when I say it's a rear drum, it's going to have uh, one particular direction. In the rear side, and uh, when I say side, it will be either left side or right side. And you also have uh, the bottom drum trucks, where uh, this also similar to a semi trailer, what you have, in which uh, the front is been supported uh, onto the uh, rear of a hauling tractor, and the rear is been resting onto their own wheels. Here, in the case of bottom. Trucks. The body of the truck remains in the same position and uh, it is used for uh, discharging the material and uh, this is being used for uh, longitudinal directions as well. And here you have the gates which have been hinged to the side of the body. And the trucks, uh, what, what I was telling is a bottom dump trucks. It's been suitable for hauling free flowing material which is uh, uh, related to the sand or a gravel or a dry earth or even hard clay. Uh, even when, the, when 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 you have the hard clay, then you can go for this uh, bottom drum trucks. This is how it is. Okay. This is for handling the 
the materials. And this you might have been known, this you might have known it's a very well, uh, well used in, in a long uh, process uh, called tippers. Okay. This tippers is also called as a lorry or a truck where you have the rear platform uh, which can be raised at the front end to the to enable the load uh, to be discharged by gravity. It is also called as a drip truck. You can uh, use this for handling uh, uh, the sand, uh, M sand, uh, clay sand or uh, 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 river sand or, or even uh, rocks or stones you can also press it and you can use it you can you can use this to travel or to transport from one place to another place these tippers are being uh, suited for a rough and uh, even this also used for quarrying operations and uh, this well suitable for carrying bulk loads in constructions and also for in, in infrastructure in industries Again, uh, even the tons, the capacity of these trippers or a, or a lorry will also vary. And you need to see, you need to see what's, what's the requirement of the capacity in terms of tons. How much is the requirement? Accordingly, you can also go for a, a selection of the, uh, of the vehicle. And accordingly, you can use it. Um, if in case, if you are going for a um, outsourcing uh, through some contractor, then uh, then they will they will have their own uh, own tents. But when you want to purchase for PWD usage, then you need to select the optimum uh, tents, and accordingly the, the vehicle cost can also be reduced. But it doesn't mean that the only you are concentrating on the cost. But at the same time, uh, you also need to concentrate on that uh, on on the, the time also required to complete the particular project. Finally, you can aid to go for a high level of tonnage or a capacity of the or you can have the optimum size. Okay, and this tippers is also used for a high performance and long term endurance. And it's also help for reducing the operating cost and it's also helping for manageability as well. You have the forklift, this is the forklift. This forklift is also called as a lift truck. Yeah, a fork truck or a forklift uh, where you have a tow motor which is again used for a, a lifting purpose and also for transporting materials. You can lift the material and uh, you can also transport from place on the place. It's also having the engine compartment, it's having the frame, it's having the forks, this is a fork, and uh, it's having the carriage, it's having the, the lifting chain, this is a chain. It's a cabin. And again, this even this forklift is also available in uh, different load capacity. And uh, what do you have a forklift is uh, having a load capacity between one to five tons. And even uh, sometimes what happens, the large capacity machines of the forklift can go up to uh, 50 tons uh, capacity as well, which are used for lifting in a heavier loads. These are the different type of lift, uh, forklift that, you, that is being used. Um, in industry purpose, even accordingly, you can also use it for uh, roads and bridge construction as well. Dumpers is the next important thing. Uh, where you have a uh, high-speed pneumatic uh, wheeled trucks and these are used for a short, short chassis. A uh, strong body and is often used for uh, loading, hauling, and dumping, where it will be done in a very fast uh, manner as compared to that of other equipment. It is also suitable for short hauls on even the rough road. Okay, Not that um, if the road is going to be very rough and where you need to do some of the, um, the construction activities, this can be used well ahead. It is specifically where a subtle moment is required, basically. You see, uh, the dumper are carrying the sand for a road uh, for handling the material and the road is going to be very rough and still you can use this okay the next important uh, is uh, hoisting equipment and as the name indicates hoisting it's a 
it's nothing but lifting a weight from one uh, location and moving it to another location uh, where the distance is quite reasonable. And this hoisting machines or equipment is been used uh, for the construction of dams. And this it can be used for uh, uh, some of the high distance again. It's not too much high distance, but the reasonable distance. Okay, even for the bridge application, what you call it. And uh, housing equipment, it adapts the winters, it is having the train hoist, it's having the tags, it is also having the cranes. And here you have the crane, uh, it's, also, it's a single machine which, which, which uh, is capable of providing three dimensional movement of a weight. And as far as uh, the cranes is concerned, it's categorized as uh, stationary or direct cranes or mobile cranes or a overhead or gantry cranes or a traveler cranes or a double cranes. These are the different cranes you have for a hosting thing. And uh, as I said, uh, here we are going to see the two important cranes one is direct cranes and the mobile cranes. This uh, Derrick cranes have been used for a maximum load of up to uh, 200 tons where you need to have, where you can use this Derrick cranes. And this consists of a, a boom, it is having a wheel on which the boom rotates uh, about a vertical axis and uh, uh, for supporting uh, load as well. And this Derrick cranes is also vertically operated, it is also, it can be um, even diesel, diesel operator or even uh, combination of diesel along with electric. And the boom, what, what, what this crane is having, it can revolve 360 degree. The next important uh, type is a mobile crane, where these cranes are mounted on a mobile unit, which is either crawler type or again you have the wheel type. And this, you have the truck cranes, which is having a high mobility, while the, the crawler mounts uh, towards uh, the distance will be very much uh, very slow here. And uh, when, uh, I, as I was telling, uh, the crawler can be used for uh, the rough road or a rough terrain or a mountain region where you can go for a crawler rather than a wheeled type. And when you go for a mobile cranes with a crawler mounted cranes, and this can be capable of moving even on a mountain region or in a rough road condition. Here, this is of a wheel type, and even you can go for a crawler type. And, um, this is the crane where this can operate. Uh, you, use for, if you can use this for construction of bridges with, with, uh, with some uh, sense. You also have a overhead or a gantry cranes. Uh, cranes. Uh, this is also been uh, much more good for a larger service area where you have a freedom from uh, door obstructions and the three way mobility. It's again a three way mobility. This overhead or gigantic grain has been widely used in the case of erection purpose, foundry, and uh, some of the uh, other applications of, uh, also can be used, uh, mostly for some of the industrial activities. And uh, the one, uh, the overhead or gigantry is uh, consisting of uh, two parts, one is a bridge and another one is a crab. And again, when I say bridge, it consists of a main grider fixed one end and uh, is capable of uh, moving on uh, the other end with the help of a uh, gantry rails. And you have the crab which consists of a uh, hosting gear mounted on a frame. The frame itself is mounted on another set of wheels and capable of traveling across the main girder. So you have a, a component called a girder. This is the overhead crane. Uh, it's been used for uh, uh, construction or yeah, the equipments, um, you have the trolley and uh, you have the push button which has been shown and accordingly what we have is it can be either electrification or it can be either um, semi, semi -electric, electrification can also be done and accordingly you can use this uh, uh, application for moving the material from one place to another place. This you have seen. Uh, uh, next, we have the traveler prints. Traveler prints is also called as uh, the bridge cans, which are having their crabs moving on the grader, girders, and these are being supported on uh, legs instead of an overhead gantry track. And uh, the legs are capable of moving on tracks laid down to the floor. We have the tower, tower uh, cranes, it's also uh, another type of crane. 
which is similar to the which is uh, direct drain. We have seen a direct drain where it can also handle a huge amount of load up to 200 tons. And this is mounted on a steel tower. This tower clamps are being used uh, uh, for uh, for raising the building specifically. Okay, but uh, um, that much uh, uh, you need to see how much is the level of the rise of the buildings. Okay, even when you say the bridge, when you go for a big construction, okay, so you need to see if you want to go for a high rise uh, bridge, okay, then this, this can be used in a much more better manner. Um, and again, the selection of the grain is also depending on the, the, the size and the overall length and with everything you need to consider and then accordingly you need to go for uh, the selection of the grain. Because the operating cost or uh, the maintenance cost is going to be higher for different grains and uh, and again uh, accordingly your annual maintenance cost or the, the the AMC or a mark contract, what you are going to have with your uh, vendors, you can also have a full, full control over it based on uh, the selection what you have. Again, the main parts of a tower uh, crane includes uh, it is having the carriage, main carriage, uh, it, have, it, it is also having a sleeving platform, it is also having the tower with the uh, uh, operator cabin and also it is having engines. And uh, the tower trains has a truss structure which has been welded from a steel parts and also for uh, the channels. This is the tower crane it's having the uh, the tower mast. This is the tower mast. It's having the counter jib ballast. It, it is the operator cab where the operation is going to happen. And uh, this is the counter jib. This is the jib tie. This is the crane runaway where the crane moves. It is having a trolley, and uh, this trolley uh, will help, uh, will be pulling uh, the rope, handling the material accordingly. We also have uh, aggregate and concrete uh, production equipment. This aggregate has to be produced at the site uh, if the quantity needs to be very high, okay. You also have a separate manufacturing unit uh, where you can have you can manufacture the concretes. Therefore, in any project where concrete equipment is very high, you need to have an aggregate preparation and processing plant, which has been essential to com to complete the concreting uh, operations. You need to even you might have some of the vendors, okay, where they manufacture the concretes for your uh, applications for PWD applications. So accordingly, even you can also have a small uh, setup of manufacturing as well, but if the quantity is going to be too huge, then it is better to go with the, uh, the already manufacturing uh, um, companies or uh, manufacturers so that uh, uh, your cycle time will be lesser. Uh, only thing is that uh, even operating costs or the, the, the overall cost occurred for uh, getting that particular concrete will be lesser. Uh, that's why make or buy decision is also very much important and accordingly you can go for a yeah, strategy. And aggregate production consists of uh, two stages. Which is, one is uh, recovery stage and another one is a uh, processing stage. And here uh, the, you are going to use a uh, basic material which is uh, stone. It can be recovered from a rock quarry or from a river bed and uh, processing can be done uh, through this uh, production unit or a uh, machine consists of uh, the different stages of uh, uh, the processing of the big stones or uh, the uh, stones uh, rocks basically is first it involves a crushing then it goes for a grading then it goes for a washing then again it goes for a stock building of aggregate okay and when i say crushing it, it you can see it of a it is consists of a pressure it is having the impact it is having the attrition it is it's also having the combination of pressure, impact, and attrition. And uh, when you go for uh, the pressure, it's been mainly used uh, to reduce the size of a large stone or a rock. From a big rock, uh, having a big diameter or a depth, big diameter, irregular shapes. The shapes will also be uh, irregular, okay? And uh, this is used for, first. It, the first process will be with, press, with some pressure. Will reduce the size of a rock or a, 
are an object then then finally it will also not only reduce the size or shape but it will also help you to maintain the uniform size according the structure will be also be maintained they are required for a concrete mix you have a jaw crusher one of the primary crusher it operates by allowing stone to go into the space between the two jaws i will show you a video how uh, and uh, the stones are big stones or uh, big rocks are been crushed i will show you in the video in the next uh, after uh, um, the, the break i will also show you uh, some of the things along with the cost i will show you and, uh, this job crusher is been uh, can be either uh, stationary or it can be uh, movable and uh, uh, and uh, where are where apparently you have the pressing surface that accordingly you need to select it okay. here the distance between the two jaws can be decreased and uh, it can see what happens uh, when we have the stone which is traveling downward under the uh, when it is when the stone is moving from upward to the downward because of the gravity what happens is uh, uh, you have the two jaws which holds the material Okay, which holds the stones and it is used to these jaws are being used for crushing activity and uh, the distance of these two jaws which is holding the stones can be uh, it will get decreased because uh, it is uh, moving downward and the stone is moving downward under the earth, earth gravity and uh, it is also exerting some of the the load or a uh, pressure uh, they are required to crush the hard rock or uh, the big big stones what you call um, so here you have the movable jaw which has been uh, which is suspended from a shaft mounted on a bearing on the crusher frame you have a jaw blades which have been made of magnesium steel uh, that can be removed replaced or even can be reversed is the jaw crusher um, where uh, you can also do the sizing gap what should be the size of your uh, Uh, stone and even you can this is the feeding where the feeding is going to happen uh, this is where the pressing uh, you have the jaws where you have one is a stationary jaw and another one is a moving jaw and this moving jaw when it moves and uh, when moving jaw and this stationary jaw uh, uh, when both are uh, in contact with this uh, uh, the material or a stone then it crushes a heavy stones into a smaller particles and finally you get uh, sizing also done and uh, here you have a flywheel and uh, this can be adjusted even with the help of a wedges you have the hydraulic ramp where you, you this operation is carried out with the help of a hydraulic presser as well the next important presser is a gyratory uh, presser this is also a, a, another type of a primary presser this is type of pressure is compressive of a hard and a steel head and it has a long conical shape with a trough shaft suspended in a bearing at the top it's similar to what we have seen in a uh, jaw crusher in the previous uh, slide and uh, it also having the eccentric base connection connected to the gears um, as the cone is uh, rotated the gap between uh, uh, the, the the pressure what we have in jaws here Uh, but here you have uh, a, a, a feed which has been uh, done between the top and the down uh, where the crushing is going to happen and finally you are going to have uh, the, 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 the size depending upon the width of uh, the operation which is being measured between the, the crusher's uh, uh, alignment towards the, uh, the directions and the very important here is the gravity crusher size varying between uh, 20 cm to 200 cm so according to here you can optimize and according to you can select what type of uh, size you want to have for your uh, application so these are the different type of uh, parts that you have for a gravity crusher you have the gears here in the case of uh, the jaw crusher where it is been operated by a hydraulic but here it is Even the gears are being used for uh, the power transmission. Or uh, and here what you have is a shaft is being connected to a bearing, 
and uh, you have a spider we have a crushing chamber here the crushing happens and uh, according to the shape you can get it well again here nice is nice will be the gear nice can be higher it's not too much here but one disadvantage can be the, the gear nice or uh, the life of the care is when you hear the thing unlike in the case of hydraulic only you need to have a uh, sufficient amount of uh, hydraulic uh, uh, fluid and uh, and again the only thing is that operation is very important but here what happens the noise can also be a part of that and again the wear and tear of the gears okay even that also needs to be taken care but again uh, the warranty you are going to get uh, and you are going to purchase this machine and when you are going for outsourcing uh, and again uh, uh, they are going to add accordingly uh, depending upon the size and then depending upon the duration of the project accordingly the project cost can be also uh, gets varied and you have a cone crusher which is uh, called as a secondary or a tertiary crusher and these crushers are capable of producing large quantities of uh, fine, uniformly fine uh, uh, crushed stone so if you want to have a large quantity of uh, stone which is of uh, uniform and fine crust then you can go for this cone crusher it has a shorter cone with a smaller inlet and outlet openings as compared to that of a directly crusher i will also show you the, the video uh, how the how the stones is coming out for uh, size and then uh, uh, it about the dark crusher and also i will also show you the cone crusher how it looks this is the feed where you are going to feed the stones different size and it is a cone shape basically as the name indicates it's a cone and here you are going to have a crushing uh, where, the, where the crushing chamber where the crushing is going to happen the crushing of the stones is going to happen um, and uh, finally when it is getting charged what happens is uh, uh, the required shape you are going to get it you have the roll crusher it's also called as a secondary or tertiary crusher and this crusher consists of a heavy cast iron frame which has been equipped with uh, two counter which has been rotating roller uh, which is mounted on a uh, on a shaft and uh, here you have the crushed stone or a crushed rock from the primary crusher which has been feed through the gap between the two, two rollers for crushing it further and uh, this roll crusher can also be uh, uh, used for uh, competing activities and, uh, and and again you see here uh, the weight of this roll crusher is going to be very light and this also the cost is going to be very low and very uh, compatible one and uh, here uh, as far as the roll crusher is having is concerned you have one roller which is been a fixed one and another one can be adjusted to give the required setting which means another one roller will be a moving one that can be uh, adjusted uh, depending upon the setting you have the two uh, rollers uh, basically uh, one uh, either one you can change the direction according you see how the how the when two are in contact how it is so it is getting missed accordingly the, uh, the stones the big rocks can be pressed you have the hammer mill uh, which is also uh, one of the impact presser mostly used as a primary or secondary presser it consists of a housing frame a horizontal shaft extending through the frame and it's also having number of frames hammers which has been attached to the frame and uh, one more hard uh, steel breaker plates is also been uh, a part of uh, hammer mill when you are feeding a uh, stone into the mill the hammer uh, which are been driven by a motor you have a motor uh, which is moving at high speed and uh, it will break the stone into pieces and uh, it helps to drive them against a hard plate and further it can reduce their size this is the hammer mill Here it is having uh, uh, the rotor and the rotor shaft. It is the hammer. 
and is having the great and accordingly uh, still you can reduce the size of the stone using this uh, hammer mill this is the casing where it protects uh, the hammer and then uh, internal parts using the casing you have the road rod mill and then uh, the ball mill you can also use this for the construction purpose basically the here uh, these are called as a tertiary crusher yeah a rod mill it consists of a circular steel cell and here the interior of a cell is been uh, uh, lined uh, with a hard material bearing surface and the cell consists of a number of uh, steel rods the length of these rods is slightly less than the length of a cell the crusher stone is feet this is very much important so whatever we are seeing whatever the mill or a hammer or a, a ro rollers what whatever we are seeing it is used for crushing the stone and again after crushing we need to have the required shape size that is where the selection of hammer mill and the other type of uh, um, presses comes into a picture according, accordingly the, the, you can also go for the optimization of the machine usage here when you go for a rod mill um, uh, ball, ball mill so what you have is a uh, um, here you have a crest stone which has been fed into the inlet and you get a fine aggregate size of, uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the material it can be even not only the stone but it even it can be sand also okay yeah, even the hard sand okay sometimes uh, even you also need to break that according to the, uh, the requirement of the sometimes you also need to make this very fine uh, fine sand okay and uh, if the rods again uh, the size of the balls can also as i said you have one rod and one ball where uh, you can draw. Uh, yes, uh, you are doing some other person. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, Okay. Uh, hope my screen is visible. Okay. Yes, yes, please proceed. This is the rod and ball mill. What you have, uh, it can be either sand or yes, stone where it can be crushed according to the the shape what is being required. In the case of ball mill, you have the different balls of different sizes, and uh, in the case of rod mill, you have a rod different. Uh, it is having a shaft with different diameter. Accordingly, you can use it for. Uh, Pressing your stones or your sand. See, when you are going on construction activities, uh, you need to have a, a concrete one of the thing and uh, uh, which is being used for uh, ingredients in the proportion. And uh, you need to have uh, a very important thing: the selection of. Uh, just a second. Okay, so you need to have uh, uh, ingredients along with the sand, uh, the, the, the stones, and then the, when you're going for concrete, uh, you need to have the, the proper ingredients. And uh, you call this as a, a storing material where uh, you have the cement and admit mixers can be mixed in a proper proportion. And, uh, you see, this is the concrete production plant where you have the aggregate batching plant, you have the concrete mixer, and you have the cement, which is coming out uh, proper ratios. This is the concrete mixer. And this concrete mixer is also called as a cement uh, 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 mixer, where it is a, where it here, the cement is being 
homogeneously combines uh, the cement aggregate such as uh, you have the combination of sand gravel and water to form a concrete and uh, this concrete mixture uses a revolving drum this is the drum this is it will be revolving to mix the components uh, sand uh, or uh, water or uh, gravel or uh, cement and finally you are going to get a, a concrete out of it that's why it's called as a concrete mixer with with uh, different uh, the proportion also quite good and you have the revolving drum and uh, for small volume works it is again a portable one you can also take it from another location and uh, basically when you are doing any any um, any uh, rework in your national highways or in your or in your on your road you can use this uh, as this is also a portable one and uh, for, for small volume of uh, work uh, you can use this as, uh, as this is portable one and it's also used so that uh, concrete can be made at, at the, the construction site itself giving the workers ample time to use the concrete before it hardens because you need to use the concrete before it hardens but again the time required for you to use the concrete to the, to the roads and the bridges uh, it, should, it, should, it should use it uh, before it hardens okay but when you go to the concrete manufacturing plant and uh, when you take and you come to your site and sometimes what happens um, the hardening uh, time if it is succeeding then again it becomes uh, very difficult for using uh, it in the roads or in uh, uh, bridge construction so hence it is required uh, according to the to the, uh, to the timings and also according to the to the level of work you need to have this uh, concrete mixer and you see this is also this is also a concrete mixer uh, where you have a special concrete transport truck transit mixer it's also made to transport and mix concrete up to the construction site uh, and they can be charged with dry materials inside and you have the water with the mixing occurring during the transport because i i told you uh, when when you transport the concrete from I hope my voice is audible. Uh, okay. Uh, when you transport uh, the concrete from the plant to the the construction site, sometimes the hardening uh, will be an issue. So in order to maintain the uh, uh, the, the the condition of the concrete, uh, this vehicle is uh, is having the concrete mixer which has been uh, attached to it, where it can be charged with a dry material, and even if it is having the water. Uh, with uh, which can be used for maintaining the the, the the condition during the transport as well and uh, what happens if you go with this type of condition is that uh, uh, already you are going to have the proper uh, mixture the proportion is going to be mixed in a proper manner and again uh, the concrete mixing it during the transport it also helps to uh, maintain the material liquid state okay this is very much important because so once if it gets hardened then it is very difficult to use for the gold and that is been uh, possible with the help of uh, uh, it is having the water in, in, in it and it will maintain a dry state and the, sometimes it will be rotating the, the, the drum will be revolving uh, you might have seen okay you might have seen uh, that uh, this the drum is going to revolve or rotate um, during the transport so because uh, it needs to ensure that uh, the concrete is not going to get dry before uh, because once it is dry then you can't use it for a uh, road or a bridge construction so it's very much important that uh, the concrete mixer should uh, uh, should ensure that uh, it should it should uh, it should uh, free from uh, getting hardness Okay. The next important thing is a uh, rubber uh, machine. This I will also show you this in a video. It's a very interesting one. This, uh, where where when you when you are extending the roads, this can be very much used. Okay. Um, suppose if you are increasing the uh, when you are going for a eight lane road or a are increasing the four lane to eight lane road. Okay. This is a very good option. Okay. And the a power finisher, it is having a power finisher as asphalt finisher and uh, 
and this is an is a vehicle which is used to lay asphalt on roadways and this is be normally fed by a drum truck okay. i will also show you the video of this it is quite interesting you know one uh, you have a separate machine a roller which is been used to press the hard asphalt mix resulting in a smooth even surface okay uh, the sun base what we have being prepared by use of a grader to trim a crust stone to a profile after rolling so here it is been basically used for a complete mix and you can go for a uh, complete road construction as well uh, by increasing uh, uh, you see this is what i told you you can also use it for extend, extending the road or even for a new road construction also where you see the size is going to be higher okay uh, this uh, you have the supply uh, according to this size the size is going to be higher you want to have a four lane or even eight lane road you want to increase the four to eight even this can be used you have very important uh, equipment called uh, pile driving equipment here the process of pile uh, driving involves uh, lifting the pile into position and uh, holding it to a refusal or to a specified depth and uh, this pile drive uh, equipment uh, this is something uh, uh, quite uh, used to, uh, it's been uh, that here the driving has been accompanied to hammering the pile top with a hammer you have a hammer and uh, you, this equipment are also been designed for driving for 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 uh, effectiveness with respect to the economic cost the, the major pile driving equipments are the pile driving rigs and also the pile driving hammers so this is all the pile driving equipment is been used for uh, the the pile equip pile activities you have a, a pile driving machines and you have the rotary drill rig uh okay um uh, uh the, we have seen this already road loaders what is the advantage we have already seen okay next we go with the uh, topic called generators okay uh, so uh, as you know the generators of different types we have a uh, yes uh, uh, generator dc generator and again we say divide into various uh, classification okay. uh, but as far as uh, the construction equipment is concerned uh, oh, not uh, okay i have i forgot to attach one more slide okay i will explain that uh, you have uh, just a second okay you have different types of uh, generators normally you can you can use it you, uh, you have a uh, portable generators you have stand still generators uh, high power generators low power generators but uh, when you are going for a uh, construction uh, basically uh, for uh, the roads or uh, bridges so you need to have a uh, generator to use for uh, electricity so in order to have that because it it will be continuous sometimes okay um, so for that yes you need to have a heavy duty generators which the range should be between uh, 200 kw to 2000 kw okay uh, where you need to have the continuous electricity when, especially when you are going to do the activities in the night time you can go for the high power generators okay and uh, this provides high amount of power which is required at a large construction but even especially when you go for a bridge construction Yes, um, for those time, for those things, it is quite, so quite useful. And if, uh, if in case, uh, if it is for a for a very less complex work, you don't need to use uh, a high power generators. Where you can also go less than uh, two hundred kilowatt as well. The jack hammers, it's again a very uh, important uh, machine or uh, equipment which are used to demolish the world concrete. Okay, the, uh, the roads you can use it, and sometimes uh, what happens, uh, the, the concrete will uh, 
uh, to become old and you cannot demolish using uh, the jack campus i will also show you a video how the demolition is going to happen with help of a jack campus and uh, see this cost the cost of the jack hammers or a compressor or generators are quite uh, very, very less and uh, you can directly buy it rather than you go for outsourcing but when you have the high equipment heavy equipment like the dosers uh, or excavators or a dumpers or a drag line or a cranes rollers those th those things can be uh, you can get it amc or a mark or you can also go for outsourcing uh, through vendors but uh, the where the cost is less you can obviously we can buy it and uh, only thing is that uh, still still uh, some of the some of the like one or two equipments also you can purchase uh, that will help you to reduce the cycle time yes you cannot depend every time on to the on to the, uh, the contractors or yeah uh, because sometimes uh, being in pwd is very much important that um, 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 the strategy wise i know everything will be clear uh, but but the thing is that it's very much important that we it's, you need to have some equipment on your own and so that it will it will help you to reduce the cycle time uh, of of the construction of the roads or wherever you need to do some clearance activities or wherever you need to do um, um, the covering of the road activities or the, the place where you need to smooth them the road okay so all this Uh, work will can happen immediately without any delay uh, if if you have some of the equipment on your own okay uh, so uh, here the jack hammers are used for uh, demolishing as i said and uh, this jack hammer is, is, is can be either a pneumatic or electro mechanical tool that combines a hammer directly with a chisel the type which is been used for a jack hammer include pneumatic hydraulics and it can be either even it, it can be of uh, electric uh, type as well the main types of uh, pneumatic that performs uh, the help of a high pressure of air from a air compressor you also have the hydraulic jack hammers uh, which which can operate by hydraulic energy with the help of some fluid uh, the next one is uh, the electric jack hammers that is been functioning with the help of electric power here you have a handheld uh, jack hammers which have been generally powered by uh, compressed air but uh, some are also been powered by electric motors this larger jack hammers um, can be used for uh, uh, rig uh, mounted hammers used for uh, construction machinery and also this can be hydraulic operated and uh, they are powerful they are, they are typically used for a uh, breaking up of uh, the rock if you want to break the rock uh, and uh, you can break the rock and then you can put it in the crusher and still you can you can find you can also make convert that rock into a required amount of size of the stone and this also used for a pavement and also for a concrete application this how the jack hammer, hammer looks it can be operated either hydraulically or electrically or pneumatically these are the different uh, components involved uh, you have the cylinder which can be either hydraulic or uh, pneumatic application you can use it and you have the chuck you have uh, uh, the bearing you have the port uh, your inlet port and the exhaust port you have the the passage for the the coolant for a hydraulic hydraulic passage or even the, you have the, the air passage and the pneumatic passage you have a piston okay um, um, it, it operates with the help of a ratchet mechanism um, it, it is also having the chuck where it, it also having the And the location where it can hold and then you can um, you can do the operation this is the important uh, machine called a ripper machine um, this machine is uh, uh, used for tearing and dripping apart from uh, uh, the earth particularly for a hard and also for a frozen ground if you have the hard and the frozen ground and uh, you want to dig uh, the materials and this rippers can be used and these are the line diagram of a ripper uh, you see it is the uh, blade single uh, blade having used for uh, the, the material uh, with, with the power of force and uh, here you have a similar uh, 
this is the bucket basically bucket is hanging in there and uh, you have the cylinder cylinder and also tilt cylinder which is operated hydraulically and uh, here you have the depth sensor you will, you will also understand how what is the depth the particular uh, uh, equipment here the ripper is nothing but a bulldozer okay it's also it's, it's a similar to the bulldozer but what you have is it, it can it help you to rip with, with uh, some depth in depth again but in the level of depth will be slightly higher than what you have for a bulldozer and again you have different size of the rippers so here you have different degree you have different depth in the different volume and different length and accordingly you can also select the size of the rippers as well you see depending upon uh, see if you have a higher uh, length you also have a higher width higher depth and the volume is also going to be higher and according to that uh, you can also select it, which one is much more suited for your application what is the output of the ripper okay this uh, the output is going to be uh, used for excavating the land in less time the, the time will be very less and it provides a very good for product increases the efficiency of work what it obtained from the ripper is used for uh, various purpose it can excavate the soil which is uh, in front of a blade which is keeping on rolling and thereby reducing the frictional drag is also quite used quite quite used for back filling as well and the other uses of ripper includes uh, used for excavation for foundations it's also used for removing deposits on uh, deposits of the clay or a gravel it's also used for excavation of a drain pipes it's also used in cutting roads in hills suppose you want to have a road into the hilly area even this ripper can be used because uh, you have a blade which is very good for uh, cutting the cutting operations and even this can be used for uh, cutting ditches uh, for your activities what are the, there are some factors that uh, is been affecting the selection of a ripper so we have seen some of the other factors for other machines even uh, we, we need to apply the same thing for a ripper as well so what is the size required for a given job uh, and what kind of uh, job for which it is will be used and firmness of a hard road and what is the slope of the hard road what is the length of the hard road all this needs to be considered when you select uh, the ripper and even the operator uh, um, experience even that also matters um, and again what type of footing uh, or which it is required to travel or is it requiring a high or low tractive efficiency even that is also a really important this is the the economic life of the ripper between uh, the, the expenditure which is required and uh, what is the best on the number of uh, hours it is going to operate so when, when when the number of hours uh, that the particular ripper is going to operate the expenditure the expenditure is going to be uh, going to be increasing uh, because the wear and tear is also very much important see uh, the expenditure uh, here the expenditure is going to be increasing because once the, hour, the the number of hours suppose if you go for the outsource okay your your vendor will be charging you uh, the charge for which you need to expend you need to spend the money that is based on the number of hours that you are going to operate and you are going to use this for your particular operations so here this is an example uh, where the graph shows uh the green is the uh, the straight uh, line uh but you see the red one uh, this is the the gap what we have between the the expected and then the operating one but what is uh, what is in your hand is you need to select the proper amount of uh, uh, the size of the ripper and accordingly you can also optimize uh, the the cost the initial cost you can bring down here okay after after some point uh, see what is in your hand is you need to look for some cost reduction or uh, or uh, the, the the maintenance cost from uh, the initial level of uh, uh, hours so that is where you can also reduce the cost at the same time 
you can you can also uh, increase uh, you can also do the some cost saving in your budget of your project it can be either for a small 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 activities or your bigger activities especially when you have uh, uh, depth where you need to have a uh, hard materials to do uh, accordingly you can also select the different uh, size and uh, different width the different volume of uh, river accordingly the cost can be adjusted here as far as the repair and maintenance cost of river is concerned uh, it includes the cost of replacement parts and even the labor charges also there because the operator is going to operate it and you have the cost of setting up and operating facilities to carry out if you have any major repair and maintenance operations the repair and maintenance costs also varies from uh, year to year that is what i have shown uh, in the last right uh, the initial uh, the graph which shows the initial uh, number of duration of uh, years or uh, months you can reduce the cost but uh, that is based on uh, uh, how you are selecting the equipment and uh, you know as as the age or as the life is going to get increased um, the uh, the life is also going to come down and the, the wear and tear is also going to get higher and accordingly the annual and maintenance cost is also going to be higher depending upon uh, the depreciation what it is going to have on the particular equipment it is the the market survey for cost of a ripper and uh, it is having two type of ripper it can be either vibro type or a hydraulic ripper uh, if you are going for a vibrator ripper it comes around uh, um 33 lakhs and hydraulic ripper it is uh, is uh, slightly uh, since it's operating with the help of hydraulic it is uh, slightly on the higher side but uh, i will give you some of the cost details in the second of okay, where some of the details are given now and uh, even there are some of other manufacturers i will also show you uh, uh, what is their specifications and how much they cost even that i can show to you and uh, this is used uh, this uh, ripper uh, the market survey cost for ripper is based on the quantities of uh, soil sand rubble and other material is used during the construction or for other work uh, accordingly the cost will also vary and this ripper can be found on a wide range of sites mines even for the quarries and uh, for engineering projects especially what you have for pwd and uh, this again uh, the two types 